I became aware of this piece of music when I was a teenager and um, immediately I was, you know, blown away by it. And I think I went through a phase where I listened to it, you know, pretty much all day, every day for like a month. Back in those days, there was uh, no YouTube. So <laughs> I would go to the library, music library and uh, at the university and uh, listen to as many different versions as I could, trying to find out, you know, one which was more emotional or more, uh, you know, structurally sound or whatever. And, uh, you know, you, the idea of playing it on the cello, of course, is a little bit of a teenage fantasy as well, because, uh, you know, it's, it's, not written, it's not written for the cello. And this transcription that I uh, play is, is actually a gift given to me by a former student of mine. His name is uh, Tor Ellergot. And uh, he's, uh, he's a passionate uh, period performance uh, student. Um, and he, he made this transcription for me uh, after I sort of lamented that when, what I could find of uh, transcriptions of this piece was, was in the original D minor, which made it um, very much a, more of a struggle on the cello than uh, I think it was ever intended to be as a composition. So he, he did a pretty much a straight uh, transcription for me as a sort of a parting gift when, when uh, he wasn't my student anymore. And it, it's pretty much exactly every note uh, that is there. I, I still had to do a little bit of finagling with certain chords, uh, voicing and stuff, just because it just it's not it's not practical for how it uh, how it lies on the cello. And I think it definitely takes a different life on the cello than it does on the violin. Perhaps uh, you know you'll find there's a, a bit more weight to it in certain certainly in certain uh, certain sections. The piece is generally in three large sections. The first is in uh, well, G minor, well, it should be in D minor, sorry, but it's in G minor, and that's a pretty, uh, pretty long section. And after a massive climax, we, we go into G major for a long section, and there's, there's certainly a lot of, of hope there. And then finally, at the last, uh, last couple of pages of, of the piece, it's, uh, it's back into G minor and sort of into its uh, sort of dark uh, reckoning. The piece definitely um, feels like life and death uh, and everything in between. Uh, it really is uh, sort of a harmonic progression over and over again. Um, and I think I st started uh, to try and work on this uh, when, the, when COVID hit, as it sort of reminded me of uh, day, day after day after day in quarantine. Uh, without too much happening and it's sort of like every day is a little bit the same and every day is a little bit different uh, and you sort of become very aware of that and um, so I felt like this um, this piece was something that may speak to people what what a lot of people are going through have gone through um, and it's uh, you know it, it's a piece that uh, it's very close to my my heart, and and very close to many many violinists' uh, heart for sure. And and for, but certainly any string player, any or you know virtually any music lover uh, can get something uh, very meaningful out of this this piece. Um, the performance is in. Um, there's lots of f fancy camera angles, but uh, it is uh, one take. Um, one one continuous take, so it is it is a real concert of sorts um, that you will uh, you will see, and uh, yeah, it was my my great honor and pleasure to uh, be able to present this to our to our audience, and uh, it's really very much a realization of a of a teenage fantasy, <laughs> better late than never.